This is surprisingly heavy. Hello, welcome to this video, which is going to be on the Simon Hope Hollowing G. Easy arm hollowing rig, I should say. I've had it since probably the last Surrey Association of Wood Turners Open Day. And it's about time I put it into action. Especially as I've been busy buying some more tools from the wonderful Mr. Ed Oliver. Morning Stuart, how you doing mate? And I've been doing some hollow forms, which you may have noticed. And it's easier to do the outside of a hollow form. Right, let's get inside the box. Now, the first thing you notice with this kit is how solid and substantial it is. It's very heavy, <clears throat> very strong, and it's going to resist a lot of vibration. It's made up of only a few simple parts and putting it together is reasonably straightforward and only takes a few minutes. And once you've got the kit assembled, putting it on and off your lathe is very straightforward as well. Um, the black plate you see on the bed bars there, the kicker plate, that's attached to the lathe bed with a bolt that's got a, a smaller plate uh, on it, which at 90 degrees twist will slip between those bed bars. And uh, you attach a tool post to one end and that bed bar bolt you attach to the other end and once that's all attached uh, fitting it onto your lathe is very straightforward and removing it from your lathe is very straightforward as well you don't have to completely remove that bolt that's uh, holding it between the bed bars just need to loosen it off so that you can rotate the plate that's under the bed bars so it'll slip out you need to get the height of the arm um, at lathe center height. The center of the arm is the center of the first part of the bar um, and <clears throat> that's held on the, in position on the tool post with an adjustable collar. And then there's a lovely very snug fit brass bushing in there. There I am just measuring that it's 29 centimeters from the top of that black plate to the center of that first arm. Now it looks like there are three sections to the arm, but there's actually a fourth section, a very short section at the back end of the um, handle gives you, as you can see, a lot of, lot of movement. So you're going to be able to get into hollow forms through a small opening and cut, do an undercut very easily. The cutters that I've got are on 19 millimeter bars. This, um, that, that's the size of the handle obviously but you can use smaller bars you can use 16 millimeter bars in it it comes with a collet that allows you to do that now the original sound from this video is lost corrupted but here i am wondering about whether i've got any wood anywhere well i did have some wood somewhere remember this project from a few weeks back yes it did need to be finished off because i'm sure we all agree it's a thing of great beauty now, admittedly, this is not the most challenging use of uh, the hollowing rig, but it's what I had on hand and I was impatient. Plus, I also wanted to finish this off and uh, I'll show you that process as we go through. Uh, the hollowing rig does not take all of the skill out. It's not a case of having a hollowing rig and you can become an expert hollower. It certainly makes it easier from a physical exertion point of view and a tool control point of view. Um, the tool I'm using here has got a six millimeter carbide cupped cutter on the end. The same, in fact, on the, the handheld hollower that I've been using and you've seen in other videos. It removes stock at a very good rate. There's a nice overhead shot showing just how easy it is to manoeuvre the tool. And what I like about it is I'm not having to put a lot of weight on the tool. 
and here I'm probably saying something about how much fun I'm having and what amazing tool it is and why did I lose my original sound. Feeling on the inside, as I said earlier, it's not a case of, of you having to use no skill with this or judgment. It's very easy to make a rippled inside. If you want a rippled inside, that's absolutely fine. But it may be that you want someone to put their finger in your hollow form and feel how smooth it is on the inside as it is on the outside. <laughs> Although in this case, uh, it's not very smooth at all on the outside. So you do need to pay attention to your tool movement and placement and not cut for too long in one place. And of course, wood changes densities from place to place on it. If there happened to be a knot or a bit of tight grain in one part, it might change uh, the accuracy of your turning. So pay attention to, to getting as smooth a finish as you can on the inside. The other thing to say about this tool while we've got it in close up is that the arm that has the cutter tip on can be swiveled. So you can swivel round to, um, I think, from about 90 degrees from that point. So you can get a very good cut on it through a smaller opening. Again, a 19 millimeter bar tool, but this has got a 12 millimeter high speed steel scraper tip on. And that's doing a good job of blending whatever little ridges there might be from that much smaller diameter cutter. Uh, on the inside. The heads are interchangeable though. You can fit the cutter tip on this if you wanted to have a very uh, smaller, much smaller opening and angle your cutter tip a bit more then you could put the cutter tip on here. Now finishing off. You will need to sand inside your hollow form. I think it's probably a matter of pride to do that even in hollow forms where you might not be able to really get your finger in very far. Something about knowing that it's finished. And while this isn't an infomercial for Simon Hope tools, I am using another Simon Hope tool here, his Pro Sander on an extra long handle. Now you can see that my masking tape, having come off my chuck, protected it very well from the blue paint. Uh, the yellow and orange paint from a previous experiment is uh, well and truly in evident unspoiled by blue. Uh, a little bit of paint removal needed there. I didn't leave myself a lot of room to part this off. Am I 100% happy with the foot? Mm, no, but I'm not always 100% with every, anything I do really. Um, just a little bit of reverse turning, a little bit of paper to protect the pear from the oak jam chuck. I really should have used a wood that's softer didn't have a bit of wood that was softer. So uh, that paper's there just to provide a little bit of cushioning against the, the harder oak. Tailstock coming up just to hold it into position. And then the only regret I have in turning this foot at the bottom is that I forgot to put a couple of lines in with the toe of a skew to show that it had been turned. Oh well. We know it's turned because we can see it happening. The little nub that's left in the centre, it's tempting sometimes to make it smaller than that. Um, but I erred on the side of caution. I must be developing some common sense. I prefer to sand it off on a sanding arbour because the bottom needs to be sanded anyway. And in my experience, it takes just as long to remove that with a chisel anyway. So bottom sanded, that was sanded to 400 grit and there's my little project finished. Hope you like it. Well there we have it. What a wonderful, wonderful piece of kit. Um, you still have to use judgment about how thin you're going to make your wall. You still have to guide the tool. You still have to work on the outside shape because if it's a horrible shape on the outside, the inside isn't really going to matter at all. Now this may not have been the most ambitious first outing with the Simon Hope hollowing tool, but it's what I had readily available. And I did need to finish this off. Especially as all of you think it's a thing of great beauty. The real beauty though, is that wonderful hollowing rig. Until next time, thanks for watching.